Hey guys, it's Sarah. I'm back with another video for Friday. Um, I was watching Libra Chick yesterday. She did her um, five uh, faves and five tag video with a little bit of a twist. And the people that she tagged at the end, um, she wanted them to answer, um, I guess, a couple of questions about how you stop yourself or uh, what you tell yourself to not eat something. Um, that you really want to eat. So something that you should not be eating. So um, what can you tell yourself in that moment to prevent you from going there? Um, and also, is there a food that you started eating again or that you found yourself eating that was causing you issues either with cravings or with creating a stall or with just creating a downward spiral? Um, and so since you tagged me, Libra Check, I'm going to answer for you. Um, I have a hard time answering this kind of question because I always feel really silly saying, well, you know, I don't really cheat. And I think it sounds really uppity and holier than thou. <laughs> and that's not at all how I want it to come across. Um, if you've watched my previous videos, you know that I've said I do not have cheat meals. I do not eat an entire serving of a cheat food. And I hate the word cheat, but I don't, I also don't want to call it a bad food or, you know, things that I should not eat that are not on my plan. Let's call it an off plan food. I do not eat whole servings of off plan foods. I have not yet in 20 weeks and it, I'm only 20 weeks out, but I have not in 20 weeks yet had the experience of, of eating a whole serving of an off plan food. What I do do, and I would say it's on a semi-regular basis, like probably three to five times a week, is I will have one bite of something that I want. I will have one tiny serving. So we were talking about, I talked about Skittles in one of my videos. I will have one Skittle. Um, I allow myself to have that little tiny portion of the bad food or one bite of whatever it is. One bite of pizza, one bite of whatever. It's actually really only pizza usually or one chip or one Cheeto or whatever it is, but it's one, one very small serving. So we'll call it the one bite rule. Um, that works for me. I know that it would not work for anyone. Um, in fact, it probably doesn't work for most people. I don't really know why it works for me. I think it's because um, compulsive eating and that emotional eating was not really my problem um, to begin with. And so I think that's why it's not my issue now. Have I been tempted to eat something? Damn straight I have. Um, last week my kids, my husband got pizza. They usually do, you know, once a week. And I was so tempted to eat an entire piece of pizza. Um, like, really tempted to eat a whole piece of pizza. So tempted, in fact, that I broke the one bite rule. Yes, I did. I ate two bites of pizza. And I felt it. I mean, physically, I felt it. It definitely, Sleepy Wonder was like, okay, listen, one bite of pizza is okay, but two is pushing it for me. Um, so that was interesting. Um, I don't think I physically could have eaten a whole piece of pizza, or and even though it was like a medium pizza, it was a small piece, but I don't physically think I could have eaten it, to be honest. I probably would have made myself ill. Um, what do I do to talk myself out of it? It's a really good question, to be honest. Um, normally... I just think about whether it's really worth it. Is it really worth it to me? And if the answer is yes, then I have to say I would probably do it. But I would definitely do a few things before I did it. And I really think that the issue comes in when you have compulsive, out of control eating where you aren't thinking before you put whatever that is in your mouth or you're just eating you know, and continuing to eat without thinking about it. That's the do the most dangerous thing as far as I'm concerned. If I really, really wanted something bad enough, I would let myself have it. I would let myself have it. I would control the portion. Absolutely. I would not eat a regular portion of whatever it is. I would eat my little VSG portion. Maybe that means one bite. Maybe it means three bites. But I would control my portion, and before I ate it, I would find it in my fitness pal, I would track it, I would make sure that it fit into my numbers that day. If it fits into my numbers, then while it might be an off-plan food, it's not actually off my plan. And as long as I plan for it, then I don't feel guilty about having it. Has that really happened? No. Um, I am very strict with what I eat. Um, 
I think very, very strict compared to some people. And I don't say that uh, as a matter of pride. Um, I would love to not have to be. But I know that for me, in my circumstance, still weighing 316.5 pounds, I need to get that weight down. I need to take advantage of the time when it is easiest for me to lose weight. And if that means that I'm eating boring, protein-only food for a year or 18 months, I will survive. I have an entire lifetime to eat other things. And that's something I think that's important as well. There are other days. And if you can't eat it that day, there will be another day when you can eat it. But maybe today isn't the day. I think about my goals. I think about stuff hanging in my closet that I want to fit into. I think about the pleasure that I'm going to get out of eating whatever it is. And if that really outweighs the pleasure I'm going to get out of seeing the scale to go down. But most of all, I think you have to be gentle with yourself. I think sometimes you do have to let yourself go off plan a little bit. It's not actually the going off plan that I think is the issue. It's how it messes with your mind afterwards. If you can eat off plan and then pick right back up on plan, who cares? That half a brownie, ginger mama VSG, it's not going to kill you. It's not going to stall your weight loss forever. It might affect that week. You might not lose, you know, a certain amount. But you can also make up for it. So if you really want to eat that brownie today, moderate your calories the rest of the week. Work out a little bit harder. Do an extra workout. That's what skinny people do. That's the secret. That's what skinny people do. They make up for it. We never did that. As fatties, we didn't do that. <laughs> and we also let having that off-plan food before spiral us into this out-of-control eating. Well, now I've ruined my diet, so who cares? I might as well just go crazy. That's the mentality that you need to stop having. Um, and that's why eating off plan can cause problems. If you let yourself spiral out of control because you made that one bad decision, that's where the, the, the failure has occurred. That one bad decision, that one off plan food, you get back right on, you get right back on plan. No big deal. One bad day, get back on plan. One bad week, get back on plan. It's not a race. It's not one battle. It's a lifetime of war. So you make a bad decision, you move on. You don't beat yourself up about it. You don't allow yourself to have guilt. It is a useless emotion. It doesn't help anyone. Don't feel guilty. Accept it. Enjoy it. Damn straight you better enjoy it if you're going to have it. Enjoy it. Move on down the road. Pick right back up on your plan and move on. For me, I think that's the best advice I can give in that kind of situation. Have I eaten stuff off plan that then has caused a stall or caused me to keep eating a certain food? No, I haven't. Um, or haven't yet. <laughs> That's the way I'll put it. I haven't yet. Um, that said, I definitely think for me, carbs are an issue. So if I were to introduce more carbs, I think that probably would cause me to continue to crave carbs and want to eat more carb carbs and by nature, eat more carbs. Um... I've introduced a few foods that I can tell might be trigger foods. Um, I was talking about, I think on Facebook, I had posted, uh, um, I think they're emerald cocoa roasted almonds. Those are good, y'all. Those are good. They have a lot of calories in them because they're almonds. They have a lot of good fat. Excellent. Normally, that's not a 10 to 1 food. I normally would not eat it. But I wanted to have something that I could have when I wanted a treat. Something a little sweet, you know, something snacky. But I noticed, you know, I could maybe eat like 12 or 15, and they're not that big either, um, at one time for the amount of calories that I'd want to spend on a snack. But then when I was done, I really wanted to eat more. I really wanted to eat more. And I wanted to pass by the cupboard and grab them and just like grab a few out of there. They made me want to graze. They made me want a snack. So uh, my husband is eating them for now. I'm going to stay away from them um, for a little bit and just see if I can go back to it at another point. 
Um, but there have been a few things like that that have come somewhat surprised me. Um, <clears throat> even things like quest bars. Uh, you know, a little bit, I don't know, a little bit of a trigger food for me. Uh, but overall, I think the danger in having off-plan stuff <clears throat> is when you mentally think that because you've now eaten off-plan that therefore, you know, you've blown it so you might as well keep doing it. Or it didn't make you sick so you might as well keep doing it. Or, oh, you still lost weight this week, so you might as well keep doing it. If you're going to eat off plan, then plan, this sounds weird, plan to eat off plan. Make a conscious decision that you're eating off plan and understand that it is off plan and that 95, 90, whatever you subscribe to percent of the time, you need to still do what you're supposed to do. If you are doing what you're supposed to do 90% of the time, 95% of the time, 99% of the time. That 1% is not going to ruin things physically. Don't let it ruin it mentally. That's it for today. Um, I hope, leave a check that that kind of answered your questions and hopefully that was helpful to someone. I um, will see you guys again at some point next week. Love you all. Bye.